I'm going to present a different perspective here. And I think it's a perspective that not much retail is looking at. So let's go ahead and go over those details. What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by on this Tuesday night once again. This is Arca coming at you with a GTII technicals, raw price action, and statistical threat of analysis. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video with a friend so that you and them could consider joining our trading uh, community in Discord called Arcab. With that said, let's go ahead and dive right into the charts. Okay, so this is the perspective that I'm talking about. We're looking at GTII and the bi-weekly chart now, okay? So we're going to really expand uh, the view here so that we can catch more of a directional guidance. <clears throat> and this is actually something that I don't believe many retail are looking at because I don't see it talked about much at all on, uh, you know, it, uh, social, social sources. OK, so in this case, we are looking at the simple moving averages here. OK, so this particular moving average is the 200 day simple moving average. You don't see it moving on. You don't see it moving along is because there isn't enough trading history within GTII on the biweekly chart to be able to fill the entirety of the 200 day simple moving average. OK, so in this case, if this this could be that near bottom that we're that we're speculating on for all the videos okay so if we're looking at the at the 200 day moving average and we put our cursor to it we may be able to find out exactly where we can find some support okay so in this case i am looking at 4738 okay so let's go ahead and make a quick look a quick little uh trend line here uh so that we can mark that 4738 bottom okay now, let's just go ahead and open up the monthly chart. So on the monthly chart, let's go ahead and zoom in one more time. So on the monthly chart, you can see this blue, this blue line here that you let me let me just make it a, a brighter blue for you to see or a different color for now. OK, there you go. OK, so this is the 100 day simple moving average here. The 100 day simple moving average is also in confluence with the 200 day simple moving average. So that gives us a potential area for a bounce. OK, and as you can see, all of the other moving averages have been used as forms of bounces before. OK, so in this case, in this case here, you can see that the price was guiding here by the SMA 10. And then we actually converted it into a resistance. We reclaimed it. We were using the SMA 10 again. Now we used it as resistance here. So you can see just how relevant moving averages are. OK, so institutions trade. Uh, primarily in time frames that retail doesn't look at okay so they more than more than likely trade on the monthly or or they trade on the quarterly chart which could be the three month chart you know so in, in these cases we do see a lot of relevance in uh, areas of support okay so this could potentially be that area that we're looking for before a continuation to the upside and why this area in particular is because we've already used this area before as a form of resistance here as a form of support right here uh, you can see that this was a resistance touch here resistance resistance we have a support right here so this is very much in an uh, an inflection zone okay so and it just so happens to be in confluence with the SMA 100 and on the bi-weekly chart it, it's uh remind me tomorrow uh, and on the bi-weekly chart is also in confluence with the 200 day simple moving average so things are looking things are looking okay I you know we're gonna have problems if we do break down this level here okay so if we break down this level and and continue on to the downside this is there's not much to catch us here okay but now the reason why I'm saying and why I'm suggesting a potential drop to the 47 cent level from the 56 where we're at now is is primarily because the supports are are well within our range and also this Please remember that on the statistical data that we've been looking at for quite some time now, uh, I am I am still looking at this as a corrective move. So the stochastic momentum is what I'm talking about. OK, so the, the stochastic momentum. Now we can see, you know, I'm going to move the cursor out of the way. Look at that pivot. OK, right here. OK, that pivot is starting to happen. But remember that I have back tested this stochastic momentum several, several times in several tickers. And I've also back tested it in this ticker in particular. So just to remind you what the stats are on the back test of just this stochastic momentum out of the 11 total iterations uh, throughout the entire trading history of GTII on the three day chart. 
uh, mom- the, the momentum has the stochastic momentum has guessed the direction of the asset ten out of those eleven times correctly, giving it a momentum upside accuracy of ninety spot ninety percent, just about ninety one percent accuracy in guessing that direction. Okay, so while we're looking at this momentum oscillator still suggesting a continuation to the downside, we should take that with heavy consideration okay so now this uh implied trend line that i have here as the direction that i started drawing here from when we were just sitting slightly above it is now starting to curve and follow our implied projection okay now one more thing i'm going to zoom out in this in this indicator so that you can i have this trend line here okay so that i can see just how far we continue on making this curvature Okay, so we're going to zoom out and we're going to take a look at prior iterations. You can see here that this is an iteration to where we surpass that current position where we are now. Uh, This one here. So there is still some room to go down, right? And then also this one here. So we have one, this tiny little one here, two, three, four, let's see, five. So we have five total iterations to where we have passed our current position. So the likelihood of, of, of passing of passing the that historical low is very likely since we are since we are sitting right at it right now and the stochastic momentum is still suggesting uh, downside. However, the downside looks like it's starting to pivot and it's trying to change its, its aggressive nature. We can consider a continuation to the downside. You know by curving this this uh, stochastic momentum and then making our pivot towards the upside okay so because of this uh continuation to the downside suggestion is why i'm thinking that the overall bottom of gtii could potentially be at 47.38 47 cents okay so this is where i'm thinking the biggest demand zone could be uh for gtii now another thing i wanted to talk to talk to you about because there are plenty of people out there who keep on telling me like why are you covering gtii why are you doing this why are you doing it's dead it's dead okay so i don't know what you how you can say that without actually really looking at the asset but you know the asset began its trading on let's see January 6th 2014 the lows of January 6th 2014 were about uh so two zeros and two one so not even one cent right okay so from that period from from let's see the very very low here of January 4th 2016 to today to the very current position today the asset is up 26,946 percent where is it dead okay like it's getting frustrating that people are telling me that it's dead like stop with that you you don't please come on man we we need we need to like i keep on mentioning to i keep on mentioning this over and over but we if we're going to be trading if we're going to be if we're going to be uh in this in this business we got to be serious about it okay we got to be sharp. We got to be smart. We got to know what we're, we got to know that we can utilize our tools into looking at the past. Okay. So in this case, yes, we're 26%, to 26,000%. I'm just going to say 27,000 because it's 946. Okay. So we're 27K up, <laughs> which is incredible. Okay. So um, now here's another perspective that I wanted to share with all of you, which is very curious. Now, before I say this, know that I'm not a financial advisor. Please take whatever I do show uh, and iterate within these videos as a form of entertainment only. Okay. Um, I need you to do your own research and everything will be okay. All right. So please, I can't suggest for you to buy or sell any assets, but this is this perspective that I'm about to present to you is very, very curious. Okay, so let's move on. Here we go. Uh, From the cyclical drawbacks, I'm talking cyclical because we are in a bi-weekly chart, so in a sense, this is a macro perspective. Okay, let's take... Let's take uh, a measurement from those highs, okay? So from this, uh, yeah, we're going to use this tool here. Okay, so from the high of this candle here, which is dated April 11th, 2016 at 76.36, okay? From that date, let's just, from from the high of that date to the very lowest iteration, uh, which I can see would be on uh, about... April 23rd, 2018, the low is about uh, two, yeah, two zeros and nine eight, so just about one cent. Uh, so one cent, okay. 
we have a drawback of 98 uh, of minus 98.71%, okay? So now let's go ahead and take the drawback from the high of this wick, which was on September 10th, 2018, and the high of that wick is 50 cents, okay? So let's go ahead and take that. Uh, this is about as close as we're going to get. Okay, that's, yeah, that's about as good as going to get. Okay, so from the 50 cent high to this low that we're looking at on, let's see, it was just about one cent again, and that is on July 6, 2020, this is a 97% loss, okay? So 97.54% decline, all right? So now let's go ahead and take the highest iteration here dated on March 29th, 2021, which the high of the candle is $4.55. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that $4.55 metric there. It's, uh, you know, we can even do it from there. It's cool. So let's go ahead and uh, make that... Uh, decline to the lowest iteration right down here. You can already see that it's about 90 spot 33, 90 spot 60 percent at 42 cents dated on August 1st, 2022. Okay, so are you starting to catch that pattern? Now let's take a look at the drawback from the current, from the, I'm talking about from the nine dollar run up that we just re recently saw. Let's go ahead and measure that to the iteration to our present moment right now. We are at minus 93 spot, 76%. So we're well within that average already. And it's very curious because of the statistical data that I'm talking about, suggesting a continuation to the downside a little more before that curvature starts to happen uh, in, in this chart. You know, we can continue that downside a little more. So that we can so that we can make that curvature and start pivoting towards the upside alongside what volatility is doing. So volatility, you can see here, it's following the implied uh, the implied projections that we had just accurately. Okay, so we do need this to get up. We're already in critical volatility, which is anything above the 90%. So anything within the 90 percentile is critical volatility. Okay, so we definitely need uh, both the moving average and the and the volatility component, which is this spectrum line above that 90 percent. Okay, so now now that we're getting that and suggesting a continuation to the downside ever so slightly we can now make a little bit of a further drawback from this 93% uh, move that we're at right now. Let's go ahead and take it to that 47.38 level and just take a look at the percentage. We would be at 94 spot 77%, which is in confluence with literally all of these iterations. Okay, so I just want to give you guys a different perspective and how we can use our tools to, to, to you know, a, a, to be uh, actually use our tools in an imaginative way. Okay, so that we can gain an edge for the future or, or, or whatever asset we're trading, right? So please know that there are several, several iterations here that are suggesting a potential bottom being found soon. Okay, so I'm still talking soon because, I mean, imagine here, we're looking at a bi-weekly chart of which it's still two days to close for this candle. Okay, the candle that we're currently on uh, closing at about uh, 56.99. I'm sure the, yeah, 56.99. So just about 57 cents. So yes, I am looking at a continuation to the downside. Um, and this may take some time because all of the RSI profiles are literally flat. You know, we're, we're being suggested uh, some sideways trading, literally starting from the 30 minute. The buy hourly is a little sideways. Um, the six hour time frame is also suggesting a neutral direction. And the one that's suggesting a slightly bearish direction is actually the daily. So now if we go up to the weekly, we can actually see the weekly is suggesting a continuation to the downside. But if you do remember, uh, please focus on these four zones right here as these are the four zones located here. Just blown up for your convenience, okay? So if you remember correctly, anytime that we are within the shallow areas of whatever percentile, we're likely to be gravitationally pulled right into the opposing zone. Okay, so while we're on, this is the weekly chart suggesting it's starting to curve. It's starting to not be so aggressive in its decline. What does that remind you of? That should remind you of a little bit of our statistical uh, indications that we're looking at here. 
we're starting the curve here and also our stochastic momentum is starting to pivot just similarly like that so we're starting to see these signs okay but these signs do take some time to realize please remember that Okay, you guys, but I think this is a pretty good place for me to leave off the video. If you have any questions or concerns, never hesitate to reach out to me on Twitter or Discord. Okay, I'll make sure to leave those links in the description below for you to consider joining the Discord trading community uh, named RCAB. Okay, uh, now with that said, I wish you well. I wish you a very good night, and I will catch you at the bell. Manana. Adios.